All right, we are gonna take a look at some examples for calorimetry problems. So our, um, each of these examples is gonna take a look at a different piece to calorimetry or a different approach on how we can use the same equation. So um, make sure you watch all three because they're very helpful. So when we look at our first example here, it says how much heat or energy is needed to warm 250 grams of water from 22 to 98 degrees Celsius. So we are looking at a change in temperature here. We have a mass and we are looking for heat. It, um, the key thing here is it says it's warming it. So our temperature is going up. So our change in temperature will be positive. Something to keep in mind. So we are gonna be using our Q equals MC delta T equation. So we call this the specific heat equation. Um, or the calorimetry equation sometimes. So uh, looking at our question, we are looking for heat. Heat is represented by Q in this equation. Um, so we're looking for Q. We are given our mass and we are given uh, values so we can find our change in temperature. The specific heat may not always be directly given in the question, but it's something we can keep in mind like this is talking about water. We found the specific heat of water in class through one of our activities, so we can use that value still. It, the specific heat will stay the same for that chemical. So um, something to be reminded of is the units we're dealing with here. So Q is measured in joules. Um, our mass is measured in grams. Our specific heat is measured in joules over grams, degrees Celsius, or times degrees Celsius. And our change in temperature is degrees Celsius. So if you look at this kind of like an equation, the grams would end up canceling, the Celsius would end up canceling, and it's showing that joules are equal to joules. So this is showing a true statement and that this equation is valid. So the first thing now we're going to do is just simply plug our numbers into our equation. So we're looking for heat, Q. Our mass is 250 grams. The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. If this was not given in the question, we could think about some other places we might have seen that specific heat for that specific substance, or sometimes it's given like in parentheses at the end of the question, specific heat of water or whatever the chemical is. So you have it. And then we need, also need to multiply by the change in temperature. We can always calculate our change in temperature to the side and then plug it in, or you can plug it directly in as your subtraction. I like to do it to the side personally. So change in temperature is always the final temperature minus the initial or the starting temperature. So our final temperature was 98 and our initial was 22 degrees Celsius. So when we subtract those, we get 76 degrees Celsius for our change in temperature. So we're gonna multiply this by 76 degrees Celsius. It is always important to remember that it's not just the big number minus the small number, that is the final minus the initial. So it's very easy to wanna to subtract them the other way sometimes, so be careful. When it says it's cooled or our temperature's going down, you should get a negative number for your change in temperature. So from here, we simply just multiply our numbers out. So we have 250 times 4.8, one eight times 76 and we get 79420 so 79,420 when we look at our units grams cancel because it's grams and then we're dividing grams here um, Celsius cancels because Celsius no one over Celsius here so we're left with joules now as always we do want to check our site our significant figures um, this is probably the biggest problem I see for you guys is that um, when you look at a number like this, we're unsure of how many significant figures there are. So the two and the five will always count because they are non-zero digits. The zero at the end only counts if there's a decimal in the number. I don't care where the decimal is, but it will only count if there's a decimal. So if we want to have that zero count, you would need a decimal behind it to keep it 250. So this only has two significant figures. 4.18, everything is not zero, so it all counts. Three, 76, not zeros, so we have two. So we need to round this to two significant figures because that's our lowest amount. 
so this will equal. We want to keep the first two digits. We check to see if the 9 rounds up. The 4 is less than 5, so it will not change the 9, so 79. But we can't just drop the rest of this off the number because 79 is different than 79,000. So we add the zeros at the end, and they are not significant because there's no decimal in this number. If I wanted to have all these zeros count, I could throw a decimal at the end, and I'd have five significant figures. They do not count right now. So our answer to this question is that it takes 79,000 joules of energy to heat up this water. So to give you some perspective on this, 250 grams of water is about a cup. Raising it from 22 to 98 degrees Celsius is going from about room temperature to almost boiling. So this is like what you would do to heat up some water to make some tea or some soup. So it takes 79,000 joules of energy. It seems like a lot. Um, doesn't matter where we get that energy from, either our stove or a microwave, but it takes a lot of energy to do this. So, um, most of the time we don't think of things in joules because it is such a small increment of measurement. Many times they convert it to kilojoules, and we'll see that given in a lot of questions, because they are a little bit more convenient to measure in. So if we took 79,000 joules and wanted to change it to kilojoules, even though it doesn't ask for it in the question, just to show you what it would be set up as, we want to go from joules to kilojoules. Just like if we went from grams to kilograms, there are 1,000 joules in one kilojoule. Just like there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram, there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer or kilometer. Um, it doesn't matter what the unit is, it's just the relationship for kilo. So 79,000 divided by 1,000 is just 79 kilojoules. So we might see that type of number often in these questions. So that's our first example, kind of a simple calorimetry or specific heat equation um, example. We can solve for any of these variables. Um, it just depends on what the question is asking. So we're going to take a look at a second question here. Um, so scooch this up. We have a question that says, what is the final temperature, so we're looking for T final, of a 750-gram sample of mercury that is heated from 22.4 degrees Celsius when 12,500 12, joules of energy are added, or we're given that much energy. So we have a few pieces we're given here. Um, let's start with our equation. We always want to start, since we're dealing with energy, with this equation and think about what we're given here. We're looking for a final temperature. So that's not the change in temperature, it's a piece of that change. So we will have to deal with that when we come to it. Um, we are given a mass and we're given 12,500 joules of energy. So we have our Q. Our specific heat we wanted to identify based on the chemical, so we're given mercury. In class, we calculated mercury specific heat to be 0 0.141 joules per gram degree Celsius in one of our activities, so we can use that value for C. So we're given Q, M, and C, but not a change in temperature. We only have an initial temperature. So what we can remind ourselves of is that we really have two equations. We know that the change in temperature is the final minus the initial. Um, so if we were to solve this first equation and find delta T, then plug it in over here, we'd have delta T, we'd have our initial, and we can solve for our final. So it's going to take two steps, basically. So if we want to solve for delta T, I always like to rearrange my equation and get the variable by itself first because then I'm only doing one calculation and not doing multiple steps. It eliminates errors in significant figures and calculations most of the time. So if I want delta T by itself, I need to divide by everything else, so M and C on both sides. This will cancel. So we have the change in temperature is equal to Q over mass times specific heat. So my Q, Q value is, our heat or energy is 12,500 joules of energy. Dividing that by our mass, which was 750 
grams. I'm including that decimal there because it is in the number and I want to make sure that I'm including that so I can count my sig figs later. Our specific heat we found in an activity so I'm going to include that 0 0.141 joules per gram degree Celsius. And that's our change in temperature. So from here we need to enter it into our calculator and calculate our answer. So we have 12,500 joules of energy. We are dividing it by 750. I like to go ahead and get my answer and then also divide it by our other number, so 0 0.141. Get my answer. So 118.203397. So how many digits do we want here? So looking at our first value, the joules, we have one, two, three significant figures. The zeros are not counting because there is no decimal here. They're trailing zeros. So we have three sig figs here. In 750, we have one, two, three significant figures. The zero counts because there is a decimal in the number. So we have three, three, and our specific heat has three. Leading zeros never count. I don't care where they are in front of the number, they just don't count. So I have three significant figures, 118. Don't even need the decimal there. Now, our units, our joules will cancel, our grams will cancel, and we are left with degrees Celsius. And it looks like they're on a fraction as well, so we actually have just degrees Celsius left. Now, this is our change in temperature. This has not answered the question yet. We are looking for the final temperature. So now that we have this number, we have 118 degrees Celsius, we have the delta T. We can plug into this equation, we have T final, minus our T initial. In the question it said we had, we were starting from 22.4 degrees Celsius. So to solve this we want to add 22.4 to both sides. This side will cancel and our T final is equal to, um, when we are adding and we do significant figures we want to add um, our number, so we've got 0 0.4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 140.4. However, we do want to check our sig figs. When we're adding or subtracting, it, it really depends on the decimal places. So this number has one decimal place, this number has zero decimal places. So we have to round to zero decimal places. So we want 140. I'm going to include the dot itself so that the zero counts. So we have three sig figs in this. Celsius, and that is our final temperature.